Hey everybody, my name is Nintendrew, and today I'm going to show you a very quick, easy, and cheap solution to fix your Joy-Con drift issues for good. Now, Joy-Con drift has been a major issue within the Nintendo community as of late, especially with the recent launch of the Switch Lite, which uses the same sort of technology and presumably is liable to fall into the same sort of failures. Some people have even gone as far as to replace the entire joystick mechanism within the controllers just to mitigate this problem. Uh, but like I mentioned, I have a much simpler solution to this issue issue, which I will be sharing with you all in this video. Now, to understand how to fix Joy-Con drift, we first need to understand what causes it in the first place. So let's take a quick look at the joystick mechanism. So what I've got here is just a quick, simple 3D modeled version of the Joy-Con thumbstick. And what you'll notice is we've got this piece up here on top, which of course rotates when you are playing your games to indicate which direction you're inputting. And then underneath we have kind of the, the plastic housing. But what you'll notice here is that the piece underneath is not just a solid sphere that's rotating in place. What we have here is two separate parts of the mechanism. Down here we have a solid plastic piece which houses the mechanical parts of the joystick itself. And then connected to the joystick up above is this sort of dome piece, which is actually what's rotating on top of this this static piece down below. Now what I have found is that Joy-Con drift is not necessarily caused by any mechanical failure, but rather by dirt, dust, and grime affecting the sensors within the mechanism. So to fix this problem, we're going to want to try to get between these two layers of plastic in order to clean out the internal parts. And what we're going to use to do that is our old friend isopropyl alcohol, the game collector's silver bullet. Now if we look again at the thumb cap part here, uh, the top part, of course, is a hard plastic that you actually touch when you're using the joystick, uh, but this little half-circle dome thing here on the bottom, that's actually a thin piece of soft rubber. It is not made of the same hard plastic as the rest of the controller. So then what we can do is, without taking apart the controller at all, we can kind of get in between and lift up that layer of rubber to clean out the internal parts. So go ahead and remove your Joy-Con from your Nintendo Switch console and grab a few Q-tips. Take a Q-tip and get it wet with a bit of isopropyl alcohol, and pull the Joy-Con's joystick in the opposite direction. From this position, you should be able to push up on that little rubber cap and kind of wedge the Q-tip in between those two layers. With a bit of patience, you should be able to saturate the internal components of the joystick with the alcohol. You may want to go over it a couple times with a few different angles to make sure you've gotten it sufficiently covered. Once you are completely satisfied with your work, make sure to move the joystick in circles for about 30 seconds to fully coat the internal components in that isopropyl alcohol. And then go ahead and leave your controller to dry for about five minutes. Once the alcohol has fully evaporated, put the Joy-Con back on your Switch and it should be working much, much better. If you still have any issues at this point, make sure to calibrate your control stick within the Switch's system menu. And if that doesn't work and you're still having problems, try taking a Q-tip to the underside of the joystick one more time and you should hopefully see some improvement. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a Switch Lite myself, so I can't guarantee that this method will work exactly the same way for that system, but as far as I understand and from pictures I've seen online, it should work in pretty much the same way. I have personally used this method on all of my Joy-Con, and they have been working since the launch of the Switch more than two years ago. However, I will say, of course, any maintenance like this should be done at your own risk. But anyway, that's enough for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned anything from this tutorial, please do consider subscribing to Nintendrew for all sorts of cool gaming content, and otherwise, I'll see you next time. Take care.